Most people are not aware that the crowning feature of the U.S. Capitol, the Statue of Freedom, was almost not placed in position atop the dome. For Black History Month, we're honoring Mr. Philip Reed. If it wasn't for Mr. Reed, you may not have the statue that sits atop the Capitol Dome today. It was Mr. Reed who figured out how to take apart the cast mold in order to prepare it for bronzing. The monumental statue was part of architect Thomas U. Walter's original design for a new cast iron dome, which was authorized by Congress in 1855. Construction superintendent, Captain Montgomery Meeks, who was overseeing the artistic decoration of the Capitol's extensions, commissioned American sculptor Thomas Crawford to create the statue. Crawford had established a studio in Rome and began designing three preliminary small models. The third design was approved in April of 1856 by the Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis, who oversaw the overall construction at the Capitol. Born around 1820, Philip Reed was an enslaved laborer belonging to the self-taught artist Clark Mills. Clark Mills was a former resident of South Carolina. That's where he purchased Mr. Philip Reed in Charleston, South Carolina. Later, Clark Mills moved to Washington, D.C., and of course, he brought along Philip Reed with him. Now, Clark Mills was famous for building many of the statues that you find throughout Washington, D.C. today with the assistance of Philip Reed. In fact, Clark Mills and Philip Reed are the first two to ever bronze a statue in America, which is an amazing feat seeing that none of the men had any formal training at all. Reed was the only known slave working on the Statue of Freedom and was paid $1.25 for labor for working on Sundays, even though he worked seven days a week. The other six days of pay went to his owner, Clark Mills. And they say that he worked 33 Sundays. But if you really think about it, he worked 33 weeks and only got paid $1.25 a week. In June 1860, casting of the Statue of Freedom began. The first step was to disassemble the plaster mold of the statue into its five main sections in order to move it from the capital to the foundry. Unfortunately, Thomas Crawford passed away before the molds were sent to Washington, D.C. But they sent along an Italian sculptor, and the Italian sculptor was supposed to assemble the molds and disassemble the molds to get it ready for the bronze casting. But the Italian sculptor, thinking that he was the only one that knew how to take apart the molds, refused to do so unless he was paid more money. S.D. Wythe wrote this in his book, Rotunda and Dome. The Italian sculptor was ordered to take the model apart. This he positively refused to do unless he was given a large increase of wages. Philip Reed, who had long been employed about his foundry as an expert and an admirable workman, undertook to take the model apart without injury, despite the Italian's assertion, and his hook inserted into an iron eye affixed to the top of the head of the figure, the rope was then gently strained repeatedly until the uppermost joint of the top section of the model began to make a faint appearance. And thus finally, one after another of the sections was discovered, their bolts unloosed, and the model uninjured, made ready for the foundry. Now, after the model was disassembled, the story doesn't end there. Philip Reed was now responsible for actually casting the statue. When they shipped the cast out to Bladensburg, Maryland, just right outside Washington, D.C., Clark Mills had a superintendent who also was thinking like the Italian. He refused to do the work necessary for bronzing the statue, and he wanted to be paid more money. And so Mills actually fired the superintendent and turned to his right-hand man, Philip Reed. Philip Reed, with the assistance of other slaves, actually did the work to finalize the bronzing process for the Statue of Freedom. This is a quote from the Thursday, December 10th, 1863 edition of the New York Tribune. The black master builder lifted the ponderous, uncouth masses and bolted them together joint to joint 
piece by piece, till they blended into the majestic freedom, who today lifts her head in the blue clouds above Washington, D.C., invoking a benediction on this imperiled republic. Unfortunately, Mr. Reed's name wasn't mentioned in the Tribune, but everyone knew who the Tribune was giving honor to. And as you notice in this video, there are quite a few images that show the Capitol in the process of being constructed, and you see the images of all of the men involved but no one took the time to take photographs of the slaves and more importantly, Mr. Reed, who was the one that supervised then the creation of the Statue of Freedom, ironically named Freedom. See, that's why I do what I do when I work in the field of photography, documentary filmmaking, research, and working on African-American history. Quite a bit of our history has been removed from the books, there's revisionist history, there's the whitewashing of our story, removing the work that we've done in order to help build America. So when you're looking at the images that we saw last month of the Capitol under siege, and we see those individuals with the insignia of hate and chanting evil and vile things, um, racists disguised as patriots and Americans. Tell your children this, tell your friends and family this when you look back at those pictures. Tell them the story of Philip Reed. And share those stories of individuals, the true Americans who helped build the capital. The true African Americans who helped build this great nation. In address to Congress, in 1928, one of the statue's most reverent supporters, William Cox, describes Reed's work in this way. The facts are that Freedom's successful taking apart and handling in parts as a model was due to the faithful service and genius of an intelligent Negro in Washington named Philip Reed. And that much credit is due him for his faithful and intelligent service rendered in modeling and casting America's superb Statue of Freedom, which kisses the first rays of the aura of the rising sun as they appear upon the apex of the Capitol's wonderful dome. On a positive note, Philip Reed did get his freedom in April of 1862, actually before the Civil War ended. Abraham Lincoln had created the Compensated Emancipation Act. And that act released certain persons held to service in the District of Columbia, basically the slaves. Mr. Reed was a free man when the last piece of the Statue of Freedom was put into place atop the Capitol Dome on December 2nd, 1863. S.D. Wife wrote again in 1865, Mr. Reed, the former slave is now in business for himself and highly esteemed by all who know him. <laughs>